Something about Italian food just warms the soul. And I'm about to warm my soul at Valle Cucina Italiana as I dig into a delicious plate of pasta and meatballs with a side of my all-time favorite, broccoli rabe. But going out to eat isn't always feasible, especially with kids. So what do you do when you want to transform your kitchen into an Italian eatery and recreate some of the flavors from your favorite Italian restaurant? Stay tuned so we can teach you how as Robert Arcangelo joins me on the set to prepare his family's tradition and one of the oldest Italian cuisines, polenta, which we will be pairing with my easy marinara and meatballs on this episode of the Red Clay Cook-Off Family Style. Time for me to eat. On today's episode of the Red Clay Family Cook-Off, one of the Red Clay Nutrition Department's very own Robert Arcangelo, a field operation manager, will be joining me to share his favorite Italian style culinary tradition passed down from his family, giving up all the secrets for the perfect polenta, which can be paired with so many different options. For today, we will be pairing his polenta with my quick and easy marinara sauce that tastes like it has been simmering all day and Italian style hand rolled meatballs. To complete the meal, we will end in true Italian style with a simple oil and vinegar dressed garden salad. So stay tuned as we recreate his family tradition recipe all the way down to the unique and fun service style of this family tradition Italian feast, true familia style. So Robert is here with me on the set. Welcome, Robert. I'm so excited to be here. I can't wait to make this beautiful meal. So Robert, as I mentioned earlier, is a field operation manager with the Red Clay Nutrition Department, which means he goes out to various school cafeterias um, and helps manage the staff, the food, to make sure everything meets our department's high standards, yes, right? Definitely. And you do a great job. Love my job. Yeah. So he also, in that role, he is um, head of the bake shop, which he takes care of making sure all the baked goods out of our bake shop out of Marlbrook Elementary come out just as delicious, yes. so they're served on the menu. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of experience in the kitchen, not just the school kitchens, but the culinary world in general, yes. right? I've worked for um, many years at Three Little Bakers Dinner Theater and I've done everything there from beginning washing dishes to moving into the hot prep area um, and then moving into the bake shop where I learned so many things that I brought to Red Clay and helped develop our, our bake shop which is phenomenal. Yeah. And we're so happy to have him, and I'm so happy that he agreed to come on the show. When I asked him um, what his favorite family tradition recipe was, you said polenta was one that you wanted yes, to share. Yes, it's um, the way we're going to present it today um, always stood out to me as a um, cool way to have a family meal, traditional feast. feast. Traditionally in a family, on, in an Italian family, Sunday is the big meal day. We all sit around the table and have a great meal. Everybody comes together grandparents, aunts, uncles, kids, and... Today it's just you and I. Just you and Me I. Me familia. Me familia. <laughs> so we're gonna get started on the quick marinara sauce, um, quick and easy marinara sauce. Robert, if you can start prepping that onion for me. Yes. So I'm so excited to do polenta. I was telling Robert, I don't really make polenta that much, so I'm excited that we're making it here today. Um, he's gonna teach me all the tricks so I can make it in my house. So I'm pouring about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil in the saucepan to start our marinara. I like to start with a, a nice um, extra virgin olive oil because if you look at the back of any jar of, of high quality marinara sauce, uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil is usually one of the second ingredients because it imparts a lot of good flavor. Um, and what I'm doing, because we're going to make a quick and easy marinara, I'm actually going to grate the onions and the purpose of the grating the onions is it makes them um, release a lot of the, the liquids which will also release a lot of flavor quickly so it doesn't have to simmer all day. As you were saying in your tradi yeah, traditional... Yeah, I mean I can remember as a child at home and at my grandparents' house, the spaghetti sauce would sit on the stove all day and simmer. The uh, it would reduce out the, the water and you would have a nice thick sauce. A lot of people call it gravy. I was always brought up on sauce. Gravy is something for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you put on turkey. Italians though, it's, the most Italians, it's called gravy. I know, Which always confuses me. I'm sauce, so. So we're making marinara sauce or gravy, depending on what you do. It's like the beach or the shore, right? Yeah, Whoop, exactly. Onion down. As it gets closer to the grater, it is harder to grate because we do not want any fingers in there. So I will go ahead and give them a mince. Robert, if you want to do that yep. for me, 
And you can go ahead and mince that for the meatballs if you okay. like. And I'm just going to pop the grated onion. The grater I'm using catches all the juices in the grater, which is nice because as I was saying earlier, it's where a lot of the flavor is. So we're going to pop that in there. Pan's nice and hot. And again, the grating just makes the onions, uh, makes it a much more, a finer dice. So it, the flavor is released a lot quicker. So that's why this is, this is one of the, the biggest secrets with this quick and easy marinara sauce. This here is about a quarter of a, a medium-sized onion and we are going to put this right into our meatball mixture which is right here. So he's going to get started on the meatballs. And the meatballs, you can start with a ground beef if you're trying to watch your overall fat intake. Um, you could use a ground turkey or ground chicken. Today we actually, um, we are using a meatloaf mix, which um, sometimes my, my mom tends to use the meatloaf mix. It's actually a combination of uh, beef, pork, and veal. Um, and it just takes on a different flavor, uh, flavor profile. And I'm going to go ahead and chop several cloves of garlic because every Italian meal is served with lots of garlic. Never too much, right? Definitely. And some of this garlic will also be used in our meatball mix as well as it is with our um, sauce. Okay, to the meatloaf that we did add onions, I'm going to um, whisk one egg and pour it right inside. Robert, how much is garlic do you think you need? I would say at least one tablespoon, but again, if you want more garlic, you can always add more depending on how much you like it. I love garlic, so I would say a good two tablespoons would be good in here. Yeah, it looks about right. That's Let's good. Do a little bit more. We chopped a lot of garlic today. <laughs> okay, to this now, we're going to add one third cup of, these are store-bought red breadcrumbs, but you can freshly grate if you want. We're going to add one third cup. And we did choose the, actually the uh, unflavored. You can choose the Italian style if you want to skip, skip that step, but we like to control what flavors go in, so that's why we're adding the flavors of the the, onion, the oregano and parsley. And we're also going to add one half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. This is, um, will add a lot of nice flavor to your meat, meatballs. You can never have enough fresh Parmesan cheese. And you need about a tape, tape, teaspoon of each one of these, right? Yep. Got some fresh, fresh parsley. Nice heaping teaspoon of, of fresh parsley and an, a nice heaping teaspoon of um, uh, grated oregano. So on that one episode with Nona, um, the pasta fajol, mm -hmm. she wakes up the spices. So one. we're going to do that for Nona. And now my hands are dirty. Ah! All right. Okay, now that we have our meatballs in our dish, we're going to go ahead and mix it. Now you have a couple of options to mix it. I'm personally like using my hands to get a good mix here. You can use a spatula, wooden spoon, or if you prefer, you can put gloves on and do it, but I'm going to do it um, just with my hands and mix up the meatloaf and all the ingredients. And I just added um, what was left of the garlic, about two tablespoons of garlic to the sauce. And you could always go heavier on the onion as well. Um, I, I could you always add that other, that other quarter of an onion? It's up to you depending on how much flavor you'd like, but I did go heavy on the garlic, so I just added that. And we're letting the onions and the garlic really um, simmer nicely, caramelize a little bit. I added the garlic after the onions because that way the onions take a little bit longer and they won't um, get bitter as the garlic would if it overcooks. You're making a mess, Robert. Having a good time. <laughs> All right, I'm using Nona's Secret again. I'm going to add about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of uh, dried oregano to the sauce. Waking it up. So all you viewers that are out there are sleepy. Wake up. How's it looking? Looking good. Jess says that she can smell this to see if it's good, so we're going to have I her... I'm the smeller. If she, we're going to have her smell the mix to see how, how it is, if we I'm need anything else. I'm not getting my hands dirty. I think that smells bella. It smells good. And your hands really are your best kitchen tools, don't you think? Yes, they are. Besides a good pair of tongs. Everybody yes. needs a good pair of tongs. Your hands are the best, and you just, you know, make sure you wash them before and get in there and have a good time. That's right. I'm also going to add um, about a teaspoon of teaspoon and a half of parsley. You could, again, we're using fresh because we have it here. You could also use dried. We are going to now start oh. and form our meatballs. Oh. Pinch of salt, pinch of Pinch us up. Go ahead. So we have some kosher salt here. Sorry, I'm going to make you get back in there again. That's okay. I'm having a good time. <laughs> He's like a kid playing with Play-Doh yes. up here. Yes, it is. And I'm going to add a pinch of salt and pepper to the, uh, to the sauce here. Okay, now our mix is ready. We're going to start to form our meatballs. And what we're going to use, a mini ice cream scoop. 
This is going to be about a one ounce meatball. So you can always just hand roll these without the scoop if you don't have one. You don't have to use the scoop. The scoop helps make sure your, your meatballs are uniform in shape. It's also a good tool if your kids are cooking with you. I don't know about anyone else that's watching, but sometimes when my kids meatball, make meatballs, they got one like this and then one like ginormous meatball. So this makes sure they're all kind of uniform and they can also get in the kitchen and help, which is nice. Okay, so basically we have this here. We're just gonna take it, put it in, roll it up right on our rack for them to go right in the oven to bake. And Robert, share the reason we have it, them elevated on this rack. Uh, we have them rack. elevated for two reasons. First off, even browning, the heat from underneath as well as on top to have nice even browning. Also to drain some of our grease off of the meatballs so um, they're not soaking up that grease because, I mean, the, the, we want to try and cook a little bit healthier and this is one way to go about that. So as we were saying earlier, you could use turkey, chicken, um, you don't have to use the scooper. Also, you could, what I tend to do sometimes at home is I'll brown my meatballs first in a pan and then finish them off by baking them in the oven. Or if you're not making a quick marinara and you're gonna make a sauce that actually simmers all day, you could brown them just to get the caramelization on the outside of the meatball and then let them finish cooking in the sauce. Correct. And my, my mom, I don't know if you've ever um, ever done this, my mom tends to put pork tender, uh, like pork loins in the sauce and then by the time it just simmers all day, yes. it just flakes apart, it's so good. One thing, you know, we're making a quick and easy marinara sauce and Which smells it's, it's gonna take about probably a half hour from beginning to end to complete that. And the polenta, when we get to making that, it'll take about 15 minutes. And the meatballs, rolling them up, this will probably bake in the oven and take about approximately 15 minutes to cook. This meal can come together in about a half an hour. Which is good. So for, for those of you who are busy out there and you can have a quick meal at home and then get off to what you're, what you're going to do. So this, is, this can be a quick meal. And a lot of the tricks in here, like Robert's saying, yes, it's quick, um, but a lot of the tricks that we're using here today will make the, it have the same flavor profile as if it has been yes. cooking all day. So that's really important. And that was the key to grating the onion. It releases the flavor quicker into our sauce. In addition to using the grated onion, a good olive oil, you also want to do, use a good tomato. Um, personally, I like uh, Tutoroso, and I use a combination of the crushed tomatoes that so gives a little bit more texture to it, so it actually you can actually have some little bits of tomato, and then one can of sauce. This is traditionally what I will use um, when I make it at home, but there's a lot of other great brands out there as well. This is just my personal favorite. So the onions have sauteed nicely. They're, they're slightly caramelized. Um, you don't want to burn them, but they are slightly caramelized. I'm getting a fa steamed facial here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> add, the, uh, add the sauce here. Gosh, a little bit of a splatter. I now have a polka dot red shirt. That's all right. So in goes the crushed tomatoes. And next is the can of tomato sauce. One thing Jess said, I mean, she splattered some on her, on her blouse, but you're really not cooking if you're not getting dirty. Yeah. So if your clothes are, are clean when you're done, you, di you didn't do a great job. We dressed up a little bit for the show today, but traditionally we're just yeah. you know, a hot mess in the kitchen. Just the mess. And Big Big Rob. Big Rob. Big Rob. That's his signature name. I'm going to go ahead and stir the sauce. You can see the olive oil is kind of all around the outside of the pot. And again, a good olive oil really does make the flavor profile in this quick and easy marinara come together. So nice. All right, so we're just gonna let the sauce simmer and then uh, that we're gonna put the meatballs in the oven, which we have preheated behind us to 400 degrees. And we're gonna let them cook for about 12 to 15 minutes until golden brown. We are gonna finish them off a little bit in the pot today, but we're gonna pop them in the oven. And while the smells in this kitchen continue to transform to those of an Italian restaurant, mm, we are going to take a quick break, but don't go too far. When we come back, we are going to get started on our creamy Italian style polenta, Robert's creamy Italian style polenta, to pull this whole meal together. All right, pop these in the oven. The oven's preheated to 400. Pop them in. There we go. Mm. The meatballs are done. It smells so fantastic in here. They have cooked for about 12 to 15 minutes. And they're cooked all the way through. The sauce is also simmered for about 12 to 15 minutes. We hope you are still with us and did not jet off to the grocery store. All right, I'm going to pop these meatballs in while Robert talks to you about the uh, 
Okay, cornmeal. so I have two and a half cups of cornmeal, which will make our polenta. I like the uh, brand Indian Head. It's a pretty, it's a finer ground cornmeal and it works really well for polenta. You can also use it in corn muffins, cornbread. So it's a pretty good product. Um, and you could could choose a whole grain cornmeal if you wanted to. If you're looking to add some fiber and health yes. to the to the dish, you could opt for the whole grain. But today we're sticking more traditional with the, the regular cornmeal. The process to cook this, uh, the polenta, will take probably 15 minutes. Back years and years and years ago, probably took a little longer because cornmeals weren't as gra weren't ground as fine as they are today. So as soon as Jess finishes wi with her Putting the meatballs in the sauce, we're going to get ready and bring the star of the show, polenta, to you. Quick and easy is what people are always looking for nowadays when it comes to cooking, right? Yes. But the trick is learning, learning tricks mm -hmm. to make quick and easy also delicious, which is what we are bringing to you today. I have the meatballs all in there. I'm going to take the lid off I'm gonna, whoop, of the pot. The water is boiling. Spots. We are going to start the process to make our polenta. What I have here is a whisk, wire whisk, you're all familiar with that. Jess now is going to take the cornmeal, pour it into the strainer, which then she's gonna sift over the um, pot while I, while, while I stir. You don't wanna add the, the, the cornmeal all at once, then you're gonna get a lumpy product. So Jess- I'm the sifter. Jess is the sifter. She's gonna just sift it and I'm gonna whisk- kind of, a, kind of a big job here. As we go, there we go. So steady is not usually my thing, so let me know if I Beautiful. get too fast. You're fine. Go ahead. Like I said earlier, I don't usually make polenta, so Robert is teaching me a lot today. And I'm going to dump this all in That's there. That's fine. You can dump it all and in and it. then just sift as you go. Perfect. There you go. Looks like we're doing a little polenta dance. Mm, 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 mm. Always fun to dance in the kitchen. We need music on the set. When the moon hits, hits your eye. I don't like know that song. You don't? The, Na, 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 Wait, which one's that? <laughs> oh, it was the word, the lyrics, or the music to it, not the word. Ow. You lost me on the nana. I'm a nana, nana, like that. I do yeah. that when I cook. I do make a lot of noise when I cook. And if you did add, dump it all in, it would get lumpy. It, right? would, it would lump on you, and you would really have to work it out, work, it, work the lumps out. So you can go ahead and keep going. We're, we're at a pretty good spot right now. Go ahead, just dump it. We're good He's now. It's like enough of that. All right, now we're just going to whisk this up until we get some nice bubbles and it starts to come back just to a boil and it's already starting but we're going to keep going and while he's doing that i'm just tearing some fresh parsley today on the show we ha we do have curly leaf parsley which you can opt for curly or flat it's up to you the flavor profile is slightly different but not too much and the trick with herbs you really want to ball them together like i just did i'll show you again with the basil Ball them together and work your fingers to hold the ball as you work the knife through, and then you've got a nice chop started. Watch and we your are fingers. I, I'm leaving with all these today. What I'm going to do now is add some milk, which is going to make this have a little bit of a creamier texture. And what kind of milk are you using? I'm over? using one percent milk for to lower the fat just a little bit, but you can also, if you prefer whole, that's fine. But I would uh, say go with one uh, percent. So I'm going to get ready to pour that in and then the texture will change so you can see a little bit of a creamier texture. Here's our milk right here, eight ounces, and we're going to slowly pour this in. There we go. I have a lot of patience for polenta. I've come to the determination. Polenta is so <laughs> good. Actually, when I was a child, I did not like polenta. Like I said, we would have our family dinners, but I would not eat it. I just never found the taste for it until about probably three years ago a friend of my daughter's came over and said she had this great meal at this restaurant and um they had polenta and it just stuck with me and i said i remember having it as a kid and not liking it i said i'm going to make it and ever since i i make it at least once a month and we're going to show you some variations of how to make this a little bit later Okay, our polenta is coming along real nice right now. As this is coming together, we're gonna to add, we have one stick of salted butter that we are just gonna add. But before we do that, we're gonna switch over now to a, our, a, just a maybe spoon. Maybe do this. 
Um, I need you to hold that for me for a second, please. Yes, this is me the rest of the show. Okay, we can just <laughs> shut that down. We're good. I just, just wanted kidding. you to hold it while I grab. Okay. Uh, you still need it. No, I don't need it. Oh. I'm good with that. I'm ready for the spoon. Now we're going to just incorporate one stick of salted butter in here and let it melt. It will add flavor to the polenta as well as um, give it a nice little sheen. And me, the, the dietitian, the health expert, if you wanted to leave the butter out, you could omit it from the recipe. It would still be really good. The cheese is going to add a lot of flavor. Um, so if you were looking to shave fat um, and calories, you could leave the butter out or cut it in half, cut it in a quarter. We said we, we, you could because yes. you could, it does still come out delicious. You can, it, again, just, it does add a nice depth. You can omit the butter if you would like. The butter's not your enemy. It's just, you know, in moderation. And I did start this with, um, I did start this with uh, water, but you can always use chicken stock. I did not put any salt in this. You can, but the cheese that I'm going to add is very salty, so that's going to take up the place. Um, so I'm going to freshly grate some. We do have some grated here as well, but I'm going to grate it with my hand, handy little microplaner here. Love this thing. I actually keep it in my purse in case I ever need it for emergencies. You keep it in your purse? <laughs> it was a joke. No, I don't keep it in my purse. There's a lot wow. of things in my purse. I have like the Mary Poppins bag. If you ever need an umbrella or, you know, Mary Poppins. One thing when you're mixing the polenta, just be sure to keep it moving in the pot. You do not want it to set because then it'll start to burn on the bottom and get crusty. But one thing about that, when my father used to make polenta, he would leave a little bit on the bottom of the um, pot and he would let that get crispy and crusty and then he would kind of scrape it off and it would be like eating corn chips. That was really, Ooh, goodness. That was really um, good. Brown that cheese. was one thing I did like as a kid about polenta. This is perfect for topping. Um, this is what, the, what, I'm, what I'm doing here right now is I'm making the garnishes for when we do plate the polenta, which is not really on a plate, which is why it's so fabulous. Um, that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, now I'm going to add the grated um, Parmesan cheese. Again, Locatelli Parmigiano Reggiano. We're going to add this to this is going to give a beautiful flavor to our polenta. While he's adding that, one more other, one other thing that I love for any Italian feast is roasted garlic. This is so simple to make and it adds such a good flavor profile to any, any Italian meal. Um, you just take a garlic clove, cut off the top, wrap it in foil, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, close it up and roast it in the oven at about 350, 400 for, for about 10 to 12 minutes um, or until it becomes caramelized. So they just pop right out. So I'm actually gonna pop these out while you're finishing that. And remember, as always, all these recipes are available on redclaycafe.com from this and every other episode of the Red Clay Family Cook-Off, which you have to check this one out once it's done because you're going to want to. Okay, this polenta is just about ready. We are going to Ooh. let this cook a few more minutes and then we are going to come back and we are going to plate this up old school Italian style. And I'm going to finish getting these garlics out of their clothes. Are you ready to transform this Italian feast into your traditional Italian style service? We're ready. That's fantastic. Do you notice there's no plates? What are we doing? We're doing this more of old school Italian. I have a new school I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But right now what we're going to do going is school. we are going to pour the polenta on this board. And back in the old days with my grandparents and everything and the whole family, we would pour this on the board. We would have all our sides, our meatballs our salad and everybody would sit around the table and we would just eat right from the board sounds fun so we're going to plate this up the way i remember it as a child and it's kind of cool all yeah, right ready? jess what we're going to do i just want you to start up here and just pour this right on the board yes, no right or wrong way to this. do it just go ahead just, just tilt it go ahead tilt it there we go go ahead there you go just go bella, ahead bella. there we go keep going keep going boop, 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 all boop, right boop. that's good Okay, perfect. You clean this later, right? No, you're cleaning what? it. What? This is your, your board. Pop this All right, me. so this is the polenta that's served on the board. Normally, we would take our, our tomato sauce, our marinara, and we would ladle some of it over top of the polenta. Just like this. So pretty. Okay, and we just spread it around. Now, this polenta will set up. Okay. Unless you're making a pizza pie. Yes. Actually, and we are going to kind of make this part of it look, look a little bit like a pizza. And we're going to leave half of it plain. Who likes plain polenta? There we go. Jess is going Jess to now garnish them up and make them Actually, look really pretty. 
I'm going to start with the, the Parmigiano Reggiano that we grated earlier. Look at that melting right in there. Yeah. It looks so nice. So you can see it just really just melts in there, adding even more flavor and deliciousness into this dish. Boop, boop, boop. It's like a, it's like a party. Party. It's mm -hmm. a Parmigiano Reggiano party. I'm going to, what? <laughs> and okay. then that's the party crasher. The more cheese, the merrier. Boop, 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 boop. You can never have enough. All right, Jess is doing parsley, and I am going to put a little bit of basil. Going beyond you. Boop, boop, boop. Ah, nice little spin there. Looks like the colors of Italy on this board right now. It's absolutely stunning. All righty. I think we could add like one more thing, right? Yes. Never too much. The garlic. Here you go. The roasted garlic cloves, which um, you do want to cook them closer to 30 minutes to really get the nice caramelization like we did here at a 400. So we're going to pop some of them in there. You don't have to do this, but it does add great flavor. You mentioned earlier that you do another yes, this variation. Is, this is old school, so now I'm gonna show you something a little bit new school. What I did here was I, I made the polenta earlier, and just as I did on set today, and then I added fresh spinach right Close into the in. mixture and just mixed it, or mixed it a, around and incorporated it. Just wilts. And, and the spinach just wilts real nice inside. Sprinkled a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And what happens, this has been setting now for, for a couple hours and it's pretty hard. It's almost like a jello consistency. So a couple things you can do with this, you can slice this down and pan fry it. You can um, just scoop it out and heat it up and eat it, but it's really good with anything, a great accompaniment. And there are so many other variations. You can put ground beef in here at the very end of cooking ground pork or any veggies. I've done it with broccoli, mushrooms, so. And speaking of greens, true Italian style meals always end, not begin, with salads. So we have a salad here, which is just simply garnished with um, red wine vinegar and olive oil. Is that what you did? Mm -hmm, a little bit of salt and pepper? That's it. That's it. But I think this feast is a little bit too much just for you and I. I think it is. I am hungry, uh, though. Maybe you. Uh, I don't know. No, you might, you you can might eat. be able to eat it all. <laughs> so we are going to invite our behind-the-scenes crew who make all this TV magic happen. So Kathy, Tom, come on out. All right. Look at that. This is the real, this is the whole crew. Tom is the culinary producer. He's also a production manager for the Red Clay School Nutrition Department, so he tests all of the recipes. But he transforms the recipes we make out here into the delicious culinary creations that you all see here on the set. And let's all give props to Kathy. Yeah. Kathy on props. She's on props. So <laughs> she's, she's always styling. So I know. Um, she stages the set. She sets the stage before each show. And let me just say, she does an amazing job. All these little knickknacks back here are thanks to Kathy. So I'm not sure about you guys, but we are hungry. But the only thing we are missing is we are missing one of our key players in the Red Clay Cook-Off family style. That's Jessica Farrand. And she is the associate producer who helps pull everything together and keeps my head kind of on straight. I don't know if that's actually possible to keep it all the way on, no. but let's not also forget um, none of this would be possible without our friends from Ed TV. So we are going to go ahead and enjoy this feast. Do you guys just want to grab a fork and dig in? True Italian style? Works for me. There we go. There we go. Mangiare, mangiare. And try a little bit of polenta first. Do we just literally just... Now, I'm just going to eat it right off the board the way my parents and grandparents did it. Cool. You just come off the board right here. Don't be shy, Tom. You grab just a little bit. I'm getting the garlic. Mmm. <laughs> so good. The garlic so, in there so is good. delicious, too. I'm going to quickly try a meatball. Can I get a meatball? Absolutely. Mmm. Try it. You actually want me to pass it to you? I'm good, not working. Good work, Robert. <laughs> Let's try this. Wow, what the heck? My fork. <laughs> Kathy, you want Kathy? a meatball? Amita bola. Mmm. Mm. The salad is going to go down mm. later, but again, in a true Italian style, you do end with the salad. From our Red Clay Cafe family to yours, remember, you're not cooking in style unless, unless you're, you're cooking, cooking family, family style. style. Buen appetito. Buen appetito.